Praise God. Once again, happy Palm Sunday to you all. This week is very, very instructive and very important in the Christian calendar because it summarizes for us everything that we are and everything our hope is hinged upon and that is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And it's my prayer that the power of Christ as typified by the finished work on Calvary will be something each and every one of us will experience in a personal way in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you once again for our gathering and in this instance, we want to thank you for the ministry of the word. I ask, O oh Lord God, that your word will not come in the enticing word of human wisdom. I submit myself to you and I pray, Lord Almighty, you will use this vessel for your glory. Lord, we ask, Lord, that we will not leave your presence the same way as we have come. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. This morning, I want to continue where I left off the last time I had the privilege of ministering here. I think that was the last Sunday in February. Time flies. Amen. And uh, we preached a sermon which we tagged Serious Survival Strategies. And this is a continuation, Serious Survival Strategies Part 2. And just to recap, our main text then was 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. And I read the New Living Translation. It says, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And what we tried to do was to say that in these trying times, uh, if there are three anchors we can hold on to, as we go through this period, is what I call the threefold card of survival. Faith, hope, and love. And what we said was that um, it's our faith in God that makes us to stand when all others are failing. When all others are failing. Hope as a survival cord is a confident expectation which rests upon the promises of God. And one of his promises is that when you go through the waters, you will not drown. Amen. When you go through the fire, you will not be scorched. And his assurance is that in this season, he will be with us. Amen. And the last anchor we said is God's love. God's love is always constant. It's impartial. It's stable. God's love is both experienced vertically in your relationship with him and horizontally through us who are custodians of that love or recipients of that love. And I think I wrapped it up by saying this is not the season for us to hoard God's love. We must reach out to people around us. God has put us in communities. God has, by his grace, seen us through and people are looking up to us. I said, this is not the season for us to hoard. This is the season for us to, if God has blessed you, share with your neighbor. Praise God. Uh, the other day, my wife and I, uh, we decided to bless some of these people who sweep the streets. Um, around. I'm sure you see some of them. The only, the only in my neighborhood. We have all these local government people who strip the streets, you know, and uh, from time to time, I, when I do my exercise routine, I pass by them, greet them. Um, as I'm led, I bless them. And this particular time, we decided that we'll give them a bag of rice. Amen. So what we, I did was to find out how many they were, you know, and um, they said there were five. And on this day, on my way to work, I just branched by, and what we did was to show some love and just dropped a bag of rice for them. And you could see the delight in their eyes. There's nothing that beats 
the feeling of knowing that God has used you to be a blessing. Amen? And I know that one way or the other, uh, rice will not finish in our house. <laughs> Food will not finish in your house. In the mighty name of Jesus. So we just want to continue uh, the part two. And we'll be looking at the case study of Isaac. How did Isaac navigate farming? In Genesis 26, verses 1 to 3 and 12 to 14. Genesis 26, 1 to 3, and we'll fast forward to 12 and 14. A severe farming now struck the land, as had happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gerah, where Abimelech, king of the Philistines, lived. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. But do as I tell you. I live here as a foreigner in this land and I'll be with you and bless you. I hereby confirm I will give you all these lands to you and your descendants just as I solemnly promised Abraham your father. Verse 12. When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted for the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. He acquired so many flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and servants that the Philistines became jealous of him. Praise God. From the account, um, we can see that farming by nature are seasonal. There's usually a cycle of economic prosperity and downturn. Economists will tell you that. And that's why there's a concept of always saving for the rainy day. That things may be buoyant now, but the way things are structured in life cycle, there will be times when there will be harvests, Bumper harvest, and there are times when there will be farming. Amen. Because that scripture tells us that the farming Isaac and his family experience could be likened to the farming that his father also experienced. Are you with me? And so, what we are going through is another cycle, and by God's grace, it will come to pass. I know that the last time, if my memory serves me right, the last time we seem to have this kind of global economic downturn was around 2008, 2009. Uh, am I correct? Uh, economists in our midst. Uh, where the whole world experienced an economic downturn. I remember even in the United States, a lot of people lost their homes. And that was what even did... Uh, uh, what was the name of the president then? Republican guy. No, not Trump. <laughs> Bush. That was the final straw that broke the camel's back and gave the elections to Obama. Amen? Because of the economic downturn. Now, that time, contrary to what the whole world was expecting or experiencing, Nigeria seemed to be insulated around that period. And that was because, in my opinion, that was when the creditors are just giving us debt relief around that period. And um, the, the price of oil was good. And more importantly, we had very good managers of the economy. So we didn't really feel the shock effect. In fact, that time there was a lot of economic activity going on in Nigeria. Because one way or the other, like Joseph had warned Pharaoh, we had saved for the rainy day. Unfortunately, fast forward how many years later, this farming has caught us on the blind side. But even then, I know that God will have mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. In Genesis 41, verse 28 to 30, 31, Genesis 41, 28 to 31, we talk about the farming in the time of Joseph. Now, fast forward again, <laughs> some generations later, after his forefathers had gone through a farming and they had, had, had gone through it, 
by the help of God, unskated, what happened? Again, famine was looming. This, in Genesis 41, I want to read the account. This will happen just as I have described it. For God has revealed to Pharaoh in advance what he's about to do. The next seven years will be a period of great prosperity throughout the land of Egypt. But afterward, there will be seven years of famine, so great that all the prosperity will be forgotten in Egypt. Famine will destroy the land. This famine will be so severe that even the memory of the good years will be erased. Does that sound familiar? Amen. But as you shall read later, at your own free time, he also gave an antidote. He told Pharaoh, this is what we must do. In the time of bumper harvest, what you do is that you will preserve at least one-fifth of the harvest for the next seven years so that that reserve will be what will keep us through the next seven years of famine. Praise God. So, we see that economic downturn is like in a cycle. It's like in a cycle. So, whilst we are going through this, I want you to know the mountains will come, the valleys will come, but the mountains will come again in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, what we need to do is that how do we survive this season so that we are not consumed? Hallelujah. Now, I'm not an economist, but I shall be taking some insights from Scripture. How do we flourish in famine? What was Isaac's way out of famine? The first thing I want to say is that Isaac sought the face of the Lord. Isaac sought the face of the Lord. How do I know? Verse 2 of our verse said, The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. But do as I tell you. Isaac was going to Egypt just like his father had decided. Many times we are impulsive when it comes to trouble solutions. We think with our arguments and our head. So, because there were some shakings and some signs... In the economy. So what did a lot of people decide to do? The best way to store your Naira is to convert it to dollars. So everybody started buying dollars. Which is not our currency. Amen. By the way, I'm not an economist, but the little I know, that dollar that you own is not yours. It belongs to who? And so while you are buying the dollars, guess whose economy you are threatening? Hallelujah. And so everybody begins to think in dollars. You want to put your house in the market, you put the dollar value. Praise God. In Nigeria. The only thing I find funny about those who always convert their assets to dollars is that they don't convert the salaries of their employees to dollars. Hello. The next time you want to buy something from somebody and it says, I do know how much I have lost. It's not worth any much in dollar value. Ask him, how much is the dollar value of your gate man? Of what you pay your gate man? Amen. I'm not an economist. What do I know? Amen. So, back to Isaac. He was going to run. He was being impulsive. And God said, no, don't go there. Stay where you are right now. The solution is not to jack out. Hello? It's getting difficult to jack out. Amen. Even though sometimes, even me, I, I, sometimes I just throw up my hand and say, Lord, why did you make me jack my back? Amen. So if I can feel like that sometimes, I can imagine how the pressure is on, especially on the younger folk. Amen. So we need to pause and ask God, what will you have me do? And I'm sure some of you are wondering, Pastor, how do you ask God? 
you, 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 you tend to think that everybody can hear God. Yes, everybody can hear God. Hello? And my question to people who feel it is impossible to hear God is, have you even tried to ask him at all? Or you just think, eh, this thing they say in church, eh, eh, pastor just come to talk, ask God. Ask him, what would you have me to do? And you'll be shocked that you can hear God. But when you start hearing God, don't go and start your own church. I have to put that in. Amen. After all, as pastor, they hear God. Now, this one is here too now. And we'll see you in church again. <laughs> Amen. We're just encouraging you to have a healthy relationship with God. Amen. Isaac did not become a priest because he was hearing God. He was still a businessman. Is somebody listening to me? And that's your business. You can ask God, what will you have me to do? And he will tell you what to do. Amen. Because if you go ahead of God, like Isaac's father did, Abraham, he traveled to Egypt. And guess what? He almost lost his pasero. Eh? Pastor Lukwenga. Can you imagine you jackpot? Eh? And Trump looks in the direction of um, Uye. <laughs> he is shaking her head. God forbid. God forbid. Amen. But that's what happened. And you know, the, the, the lesson there is that there are some decisions you can take outside of God and there will be grave consequences for it. Tell your neighbor, this is not the time to jump back. Did you see? Did you see how low that was? I've just wasted. Do you, do you know I had sleepless nights? Do you know I had sleepless nights just trying to put together this salmon? And you are not even buying it. Oh, I'm discouraged. <laughs> Praise God. My wife is encouraging me. Amen. I think I'll be looking at you, Maureen. <laughs> you can't even jackpot without me anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 12, 15. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king, and said, I was taking it to his palace. <laughs> Somebody's wife. I'm sure Abraham was have had sleepless nights. Thank God for the mercy of God. Eh? As what I have you are covering your head. Amen. So, in it we see Isaac obeyed. It may not have made sense, but he trusted God. When you have reached your wit's end, you've been pushed to the wall. It's a good time to turn to God. I say, Lord God, you know what? I've done all I know to do. I can't even figure this thing out. It's not just adding up. I trust you. The psalmist in Psalm 25 verse 1 and 3. Psalm 25 verse 1 to 3 says, Oh Lord, I give my life to you. I trust in you, oh my God. Do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. You will not be disgraced in the name of Jesus. But disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. So trust God. And I try to put myself in the position of Isaac in a patched land. In a land where famine was predominant. I can imagine that the ground was hard. And yet God said, stay here and sow in this land. It must have been difficult. And it's not to trivialize what we are going through. We are in hard times. 
But there's one thing God demands of us at this point in time is perseverance. Being strengthened in the inner man by his spirit. Hard times comes and then you stand up. Trials come, you stand up. Hardship comes. You say, I can bear it. I had one rascally friend when we were in secondary school. So rascally, well, it wasn't even rascally, he was a bad boy. Amen. And there was one day they finally caught him. I don't know what he got into this time around. And they brought him to show him as an example in the assembly hall. The teacher who had the best caning skill was brought to come and cane him. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, these days, I don't think uh, you are even allowed to cane any child anymore. He was the, the most dreaded teacher for caning was brought. To make him an example to all of us because he was like our hero. We will dehumanize your hero or you these boys. So they brought him. They started killing him. By the way, the guy is a pastor now. They killed. They killed. They killed. This is how the man stood. I think after a while, the, past, the person came and said, this one will not die in my hand. <laughs> so they left him. And I remember as he was walking down the line, I'm sure he was in pain, no? He was a big boy. I remember, I'll never forget, he said, they can only torture. They cannot kill. The whole assembly went up again. They could stone. I'm not sure if he came to choose school the next day. <laughs> Why am I communicating? You have made of sterner and tougher stuff than you think. You were prepared for a time such as this. Tell somebody, I can go through this. And I'll come through it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 4, 10. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thought in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Some of you, this season will, will humble you. Uh, okay. I, I like that. Amen. Three different times, I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time, he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now, I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. It says I can take it. Why? Because the grace of God is available. So this is a season to trust God. Isaac sought the face of God. And God told him what to do. It didn't make sense. But he obeyed. And grace accompanied his obedience. And he began to sow in the land. Next thing I want to say. Is I don't give up on that skill. Because God is still going to use your means of livelihood. To take you through this season. 
Are you with me? Isaac sowed in the land because he was a farmer. This is not the time to abandon your trade. You may need to re-strategize. And God will give you wisdom. Because after the farming, people will come looking for you again. But where will you be? Have you jackpot? Or have you gone to go and do forex trading? I understand it's not so lucrative anymore. I don't know. I heard. So, so through your means of livelihood and trusting for success. God will always use that which he has bequeathed to you, the skills he has bequeathed to you as a vehicle to bless you. Don't abandon it. In Deuteronomy 16, 15b, Deuteronomy chapter 16, 15, the beef part, it says, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands, so that you will surely rejoice. You know, when you look at the account of Peter and his colleagues and Jesus, when they had fished all night and they did not get anything and Jesus used their boat amen as in the account in Luke chapter 5 and after he had used their boat he said Lord, I want to reward you just cast your net into the deep and in obedience they did that they said they caught a net breaking catch of fish net breaking and the miracle of that is that if Peter and his colleagues were not skilled fishermen, they would have lost that miracle. Am I communicating? They were good at what they did. So this is not the season to abandon your craft. Be diligent. Be hardworking. And be faithful. Those of us who are employees, be faithful. If you still have a job, hold on to it. Jobs are few and far between right now. Is somebody listening to me? They have an attitude. Nigerians have attitude. Or rather, some of Nigerians can have an attitude. This is not the time to be going late to work. This is not the time to abuse the time of your employer. This is a time everybody should take ownership of what is left. Is somebody listening to me? Because this is what is keeping us afloat. Don't steal the stock. If you steal them, it will end. You are your guy. You'll be looking at yourselves. And it's like your guy can jack Is somebody listening? Because sometimes we are so short-sighted. It's unbelievable. Uber drivers, they think they are being smart. I say Uber will fold up. They will go. You will have nothing again. Offline, offline, offline. Oops. Oh, the amount of, uh, uh, what do you call it? The amount of no, no, not well. What comes to the Uber that they take? Commission. It's too much. Uh, it's too much. Where were you before they came? Why don't you believe God that one way or the other, God will open the secret of that business to you? I tell, I, I, I educate them. I always hear them complaining, complaining, complaining. I say, you, they will fold up that you go so far. Am I communicating? Be diligent, be hardworking, and be faithful. So give everything. But also, what you want to do in this season, sow the word of God, sow encouragement, soak yourself in the word of God. The psalmist says in Psalm 63, 6 to 8, Psalm 63, 6 to 8, I lie awake, thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. 
because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. Surround yourself. I said, surround yourself with positive people. He's always thinking about God, meditating about God. After a hard day's work, after he just survived another day, he's always meditating. And in that meditation, God comes through for him. The next thing I want to say, this may be a period for you to also do what? Improve yourself. I stumbled on some courses that are free now. Harvard. My wife, I'm going to register. They say it's free. So, Mr. I can become Harvard. Uh, I'll put, I'll, I'll put the sticker on the back of my car. Amen. When they are doing their alumni, uh, when they gather, have our alumni, uh, we are saying, Mr. I will show, I will show face. <laughs> they don't go ask me, say, now online you do. If somebody listening, I'm giving you free information. Amen. If I also understand Imperial College too, I also doing free online courses. If somebody listening to me, you have time on your hand. Do what? Engage yourself. While you are waiting to jackpa. So acquire new skills. You never know. Post hard times. It may be what be the vehicle for you to do a cruise to the next level. And can you imagine the opportunity to go to school free of charge? You don't have to pay in these hard times. Is somebody listening to me? Develop a positive mindset. Develop a positive mindset. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. For our present troubles are small and will not last very long. He's a man that is daily, daily, daily being, his life was always in danger. That's Paul. He says our present small troubles are small and will not last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. Faith! For things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Do you see yourself overcoming these hard times? I can't hear your yes. It shall pass. It shall come to pass. And after it has come to pass, you will still be standing. Like our old vendor, I think I've mentioned it before, it was raining heavily and this man was still, you know those days, the vendors, they had this horn. Papo, papo, you know the vendor is around. Amen. And it was raining heavily. And my father had to go and buy his sets of newspapers. And I remember him saying to the ah, Che, you know, I don't see this rain. You know the way Yoruba say it's raining. I say, you know, I don't see rain. The rain was beating the man very well. And the man said, ah, he said, oh, God, now you go tired. That means now rainy season I be. Yeah, you go stop now. You go go. I go see there. I hope somebody is listening. Next thing I want to say. Cultivate the fellowship of positive friends and people. Proverbs 24 verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Who are the people around you? Too much negativity. Don't listen to social media. You know what I've come? My own conclusion. Those people on social media that are always knocking Nigeria in the abroad. The Nigerians in the abroad. This is my opinion. Though. 
they have to keep on convincing themselves that they took the right decision. Because if you have gone, you have gone. Now, which, why are you still looking back? Eh? You, every day you go there and say, eh, it's that country, see, there. It goes so, it, 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 they are nowhere there, they go to so scatter. And you know, see that there, we stay there. Say, so, you don't go. Leave us alone, Abby. Does that make sense? I was like, well, you, don't, you, you have reached your Canada, you have reached your America, you have reached your London, you have reached your France. You are still coming back and abusing those of us who are here. Why are you not just embrace the country where you did now? They must convince themselves that they took the right decision. And they want you to come and join them. You will go, but you go and visit. Amen. <laughs> and you ask, ah, you know, they, we do. And you are going back, you are going back. Somebody told me once, he said, Pastor, two years ago you visited. I said, Yes. He said, Last year you visited. I said, Yes. He said, The last time I visited Nigeria, three years later, I have not recovered. He lived in the abroad. <laughs> when you cultivate the right positive friends and people around you, it's a hedge and buffer emotionally. And it also translates to material benefits, brethren. Because when there's a relationship, it's easy for me to reach out to you with the little I have. Am I communicating? And that's why I say, you must show the love of God horizontally. Because no matter how you are, you are better off than somebody. So how will I help you if you are not close to me? Is somebody listening? This is real life. Find the right people. Not the one. Don't gather around the people who want to judge Jakpa. And all you discuss is Jakpa, 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 Jakpa. Go around people who are surviving in spite of and encourage what one another. Ah, finally, if you can hold on through this season, God is faithful. And like Isaac, you shall reap a hundredfold. Amen. Even in this land, in the mighty name of Jesus. So we are going to pray some prayers. Can you please rise to your feet? And the prayers are anchored on 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12 to 16. 2 Chronicles 7, 12 to 16. Then one night, the Lord appeared to Solomon. Tonight, God will appear to somebody. I said, I heard your prayer. God will hear your prayer. And I have chosen this temple as a place for making sacrifices. You know the temple he's talking about? Tell somebody me. Me. I'm the temple of the Most High God. What he says is now, once you know who you are, eh, when you open your, in the name of Jesus, God will appear. Verse 13. At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls. Or command grasshoppers to devour your crops. Or send plagues among you. Then, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be opened and my ears attentive to every prayer made in promised land today. For I have chosen you, my children, and I've set you apart as a holy place where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over you for you are dear to my heart. I want you to have confidence this morning in your prayer. Amen? Tell somebody I'm a child of God. God is mindful of me. He says when I pray, he will hear. When I humble myself, when I repent, he will forgive me and he will restore in the mighty name of Jesus. So you lift up your eyes and say, Father, please forgive our sins 
as a nation collectively and forgive me my sins begin to ask God for forgiveness Lord forgive us corporately as a nation Lord God we have wasted resources Lord we have not been mindful of you please forgive me my sins every way I have contributed to the mess we have found ourselves please have mercy on me have mercy on Nigeria in Jesus mighty name we pray in the matchless name of Jesus we pray may the Lord hack into your prayer may the Lord hack into my prayer may the Lord have mercy on us in this season of Easter may the shed blood on Calvary may it account for us for forgiveness in the name of Jesus your next prayer say Father please lead me by the Holy Spirit in my daily decisions choices and actions Holy Spirit guide me begin to pray right now Holy Spirit in my daily decisions, choices and actions, please lead me. Lead me. Lead me, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Finally, you say, Father, reveal your perfect will for me in life circumstances as I put my life in your hands. So, so, tell him to reveal his will for you. Father, please reveal your will for my life. Your perfect will. Your perfect will. Your perfect will. Your perfect will. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the matchless name of Jesus we pray. I'm going to lead you in a declaration of faith right now. I want you to just raise up your hands to heaven and to God. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare my future is secure in you. My victory is settled in Christ. No situation will cause me to fear or be anxious. I am confident that you have begun a good work in my life, in my family, in my business, in my career. You will surely bring it to a perfect end in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen and amen. amen. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, carry your children. Amen. See them through this season. Amen. Allay their fears. Amen. Father, provide supernaturally. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, if there has been any mistake in not preparing for this season, let your mercy prevail. Amen. Lord, and I pray for one or two of your children here that you are calling to a closer walk with you. May they hear your voice in the name of Jesus. I want to make a call. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to dedicate your life to Jesus. Wherever you are, just raise your hand quickly so that it will be like the icing on the cake. Don't leave here and just go through another religious exercise. But you say, I want to have a walk with him. I want to be able to talk to him and he hears me and I hear him. If that's your desire. You want to submit your life to Jesus. I want to pray with you. Wherever you are, just quickly raise your hand and we'll pray together. Quickly. My time is far spent. I know there's one or two people here. The Lord is calling you to a deeper walk. A walk of salvation. The Lord wants to give you an assurance that he's with you and he's for you. He wants to make assurance double sure in your life. Anyone say, Pastor, pray with me. Pray for me. I want to submit my heart to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord.